right, welcome to chapter 14 in our text, Lewis Bond's Doing Ethics. Uh, this chapter is on animal rights and underlying the questions as to whether animals have rights or what it means for animals to have rights uh, is the issue of whether animals have moral standing. And there are three different views, as we talked about in chapter 13, that talk about the moral standing of humans, animals, and other living creatures. So the first view that we talked about was anthropocentrism, and this is the idea that humans only have moral standing. Now, why would only humans have moral standing? Because there is something unique to us as human beings. Um, many different philosophers have put forth different ideas as to what that unique quality or characteristic is. For example, some feel that uh, humans are the only creatures that have a soul, um, and that animals don't have souls, and therefore do not deserve uh, the same moral considerations that human beings do. There's also the idea that human beings um, are at the top of the food chain, that there's uh, reason to give us moral standing simply because we are it, we are the supreme creature on earth. Others argue that human beings should have moral standing because we have family bonds. Some argue because we have both a written and an oral language. Uh, some because we have not only consciousness, but self-consciousness. That is, that we're aware of ourselves um, and can think about ourselves and can think about our own thinking in ways that other living creatures can't. Um, some philosophers also argue that um, because we're forward thinking, because we can plan ahead, because we have expectations to life and liberty uh, in the future, that those are reasons that we deserve more moral standing or higher moral standing than animals. Now let's look at the idea of zoocentrism. So zoocentrism says that humans and animals have moral standing because humans and animals share a lot of common uh, characteristics. For example, uh, we feel pain, uh, we feel joy, we feel sadness. Um, there is a, a level of consciousness that we all share simply because we are living beings. Um, some zoocentrists say that uh, moral standing should be correlated to sentience, so that the more sentient uh, an entity is, the higher its moral standing. So animals that are like us, um, whales, dolphins, apes, um, monkeys perhaps, um, should be given more moral standing than, say, a lizard or snake. Um, then there's the idea of biocentrism. Now, biocentrists believe that all living things deserve moral standing, plants, animals, human beings. Extreme biocentrists would say that all living entities deserve the same moral standing. Human and amoeba, for example, would have the same moral standing. Some biocentrists argue that, again, moral standing uh, would depend on the complexity of life, so that human beings and like creatures would have a higher moral standing and uh, things like an amoeba would have low moral standing. So what does it mean when we talk about animals having rights? Um, we certainly don't mean that they have the right to drive a car or the right to vote in elections, not the same kind of rights that we would give human beings. What we're simply saying is that they have a right to life and a basic uh, quality of life at that. Um, the issue of animal rights raises some very complex questions for us to try to deal with. Um, for example, what kind of animals do we eat? Are we allowed to eat animals? Uh, if you are a, a zoocentrist or a biocentrist who believes that animals, at least more sentient animals, have the same moral standing as human beings, then killing that animal for food or sport would be akin to killing a human being, and thus public policy should treat it as such. Um, we've all heard the horror stories about slaughterhouses and, and the way um, factory farms uh, treat animals. But what about the idea of specialty foods uh, like veal and foie gras in which the animals are even more extremely um, poorly treated uh, or certainly live very unnatural lives? Uh, what about animal testing? Do we uh, allow it um, because animals don't have the same moral standing that we do? Do we disallow it completely because animals do have the same moral standing that we do? Should we place some emphasis on uh, testing for medical procedures and medicines that may save hundreds, thousands, millions of lives um, over, uh, say, um, experimenting on animals for cosmetics. Uh, certainly cosmetics enhance quality of life for many people, but they're not life-saving. Um, what do we do about pet breeders? 
Are pet breeders treating animals inhumanely? What about professional racing, dog racing, horse racing? So we all agree that our quality of life is enhanced by animals, or that's probably an overstatement as an animal lover. Um, many of us would agree, particularly animal lovers and pet owners, um, that animals enhance the quality of our life that they can certainly be of benefit to human beings. But where do we want to draw the moral line to say, this is an ethical treatment and this is not an ethical treatment. Um, we can experiment in this situation, but not in that situation or not at all. Um, we should be allowed to eat or hunt these animals, but not those animals. And on what basis are we going to make an argument for our beliefs? Ultimately, the idea of whether animals have rights comes back to the idea of whether animals have moral standing, and if they do, to what degree do they have it? Because their rights would correlate to the degree of moral standing. So our treatment of animals does reflect our belief in their moral standing, and whatever view you choose to adopt, anthropocentrism, zoocentrism, or biocentrism, um, none of them necessarily give human beings the right to completely dominate or mistreat animals. Uh, most people do not believe that animals are things. Um, we do recognize that there is some similarity with us as human beings. As I said, animals do communicate. They have a language. Um, they don't write it down, but they still communicate. Um, animals feel pain. Uh, some animals express sadness um, and joy. Uh, there is an intelligence. They're able to learn, not to the capacity that human beings are able to, but still they're able to learn. So we need to keep in mind that the arguments around animal rights really do go back to whether animals have moral standing or not, and if they do, to what degree they have it. So as you're reading the arguments with for and against animal rights presented in our chapter, really look for the perspective from which the author is speaking. Um, is it an anthropocentric, zoocentric, or biocentric perspective? And if you see that the author is writing from an anthropocentric uh, perspective, then try to look for what it is they think human beings have that animals do not have that gives only human beings moral standing. And even if we choose to adopt anthropocentrism, which does put man um, at the center of the moral universe, so to speak, uh, this does not mean that there is not still some relationship or obligation on the part of humans toward animals. It simply means that animals do not have the same moral standing as human beings. And this does appear to be the mainstream view on animal rights. Um, most people are not willing to give up meat or wearing leather products or um, to risk human lives in medical testing before risking animal lives uh, in medical testing. Um, but that doesn't mean that people are insensitive to the needs of animals. It simply means that they don't equate the moral standing of animals with that of human beings. And after reading this chapter, whichever way you decide to go, um, just try to keep in mind a quote, it's been attributed to Chief Seattle and other um, Native American chiefs, but it simply is, if all the animals were to vanish from the earth, man would die from loneliness of spirit, for whatsoever happens to the animals also happens to man.